Hi everyone, let's talk about Macau. So we are big fans of Steffenfeld's and especially his, you know, classic point salads. They've all got their own little twists, really. You know, Amerigo's got the cube tower, Trajan's got the mancala and the Trajan tiles on that and stuff. And this has got the wind rose. If you haven't seen the playthrough, and watch the playthrough, I'll give you a much better idea than what I'm seeing. It's linked in the description. Uh, the wind rose lets you, you know, you roll dice at the start of the round and you get to pick two of the dice. Uh, the higher number you get, the more action cubes of that colour you get which is great, but you're not going to get them until that round. So if I want six purple cubes, that's going to be great. I'm going to get to do loads of things, but I'm not going to get it for, you know, six rounds into the future. Well, five technically, because you twist the windrows after you take the cubes. But uh, yeah, that's the that's the main conceit of the game. And on top of that is the, the thing where you are going to get a card every round from the available uh, display. And yeah, you only have five spaces on your player board and you have to take one every round. And if you ever uh, go over that five limit, you're going to take a punishment marker, which is losing three points at the end of the game. So it's all about balancing you know, the, the dice that you're getting, the cubes that you're getting, building up for these big turns, maybe taking smaller benefits because you can line up the colours right. It's all about trying to match the patterns that you need to get the cards out from your uh, board out into your display not only to avoid punishment, but so you can start using them and leveraging them for leveraging, leveraging, I said it wrong again, leveraging them, using them to your, to their best effect, really. And so you can go about it by getting a load of money and then you are watching the exchange rates each round, the cards that are drawn determine how many points you can buy and how much those points are going to cost. So you're trying to make sure you have the right amount of money or are you going to hold out and hope that it's a better exchange rate next round, but then it might be for no points next round. And you are picking up goods tiles, you're racing across the board as well because you want the most points, so you want to be there first. I think some of those bits, it'll be more of a race for these things in a game with more players. Because, you know, the, the thing that changes is the, the, the card display is shrunk down to two players. And so, yeah, there'll, there'll be more in contention for, you know, the city spaces. There'll be more getting in the way of each other. There'll be more racing for the, the good cities. And so, so, yeah, you have to do a little bit of these things because if you just let one person, like maybe in the playthrough, if you just let one person run around all of these things and just, oh, okay, I'll just get one good of each type and just run around and get all of the, the five-point spots, then, yeah, that's, that's not ideal. You have to be aware of what the other person is going for. And, you know, having the freedom in money to just be able to do that exchange rate thing every time and do the, the tribute to get the points, there's... As in any lovely point salad game, there's so many different ways to uh, victory here. And yeah, the, there's a huge, huge deck of cards. You see, I'd say half, maybe, in a game. Maybe less than that. And that's that's not just for two players. That's uh, that's in general. So there's there's some luck. It's, it's, there's, there's some luck involved in, you know, if you are basing it back, you can't base your strategy on past experiences really that's, oh, you know, there's a card in here that's going to give you points when you move your ship or it's going to double up getting Jade or something like that. You can't really plan for that because you don't know that it's going to come out. You have to, you take it as it comes. You only see these drawn at the start of the round. It's a bit heartbreaking in a two player game that you need to draw four from here still to work out the proper tribute exchange rate, but then you discard two and often you see a perfect card for you just getting taken away there. And yeah, that's that's not uh, that's not changing the balance. It's the same as if you'd never drawn that card, but it's a it's a little there's a little tinge of heartbreak there where you see it come out and get taken away from you. But uh yeah, I think overall this this the it's this is the hook really. This is the key thing. The planning that goes into this. And I can see I can see a totally valid point of um, you are deciding which cards to take and therefore which colours you are going to need cubes for. You're taking that before you know what the dice are going to be and what you're going to be planning ahead for. And so that does introduce the element of, especially towards the end of the game, when you have to still take cards and any cards on your board at the end of the game are penalties, minus three points. You do get into the situation where you... You just the way the dice came out, you just couldn't do those things. And I can see that being, uh, it's definitely been a deal breaker for people, as I've read on uh, on Board Game Geek over the years, that, yeah, that's 
maybe a little coupled with you know the cards and not knowing what's going to come out maybe that's a little bit too much it's not for us though we really really love Macau and like all of these things so with the with Sevenfell's little twists on these games there's there's nothing really like it that I've played and yeah I think it's it's been a fantastic time every time but the other thing to know about this is uh, <laughs> to get people asking when I do a video about something there always oh, is a reprint coming out of it and I wish I could say that there was one coming out from Macau no news on that at all. It's been out of print, you know, in the five, six years I've been playing games. About five years, I think. It's always been out of print for me. And my, my copy is Dutch, that's why it's all paste-ups. Although I think that the paste-ups here do improve it a little bit because all of the cards in Macau are just full text. And, you know, once you are familiar with some of the way these things, especially the office cards, you can just see it at a glance with the icons. It's, it's weird, isn't it? Because sometimes games just go icon-heavy and... You know, lose loads in translation from having to translate all these hieroglyphs on the reference sheets. Uh, but uh, in this game, I think it could have done with a few of those. But anyway, uh, yeah, you can't get Macau. Mine is a Dutch copy that I got from, if you check out Board Game Prices, uh, .co.uk for, for us, but there's, there's equivalents. There's definitely a .com one. Uh, there's probably equivalents for elsewhere in the world as well. I just kept an eye on there and, you know, the board game geek markets for a, a lot of the games that I had that have been out of print, they are great places for it. eBay, never really had that much luck with. eBay was good for, you know, American sellers that had things like at the Gates of Luoyang. They're kind of expensive because you had to pay customs, but they were there and brand new. Never had much luck getting used ones off eBay, but yeah, if you are keen on these, you know, until, you know, Alia, yeah, White Goblin is the publisher for the Dutch version, but Alia, get on it. Yeah, I know that it's a text-heavy game and it's going to be hard to have a multilingual version of this, but uh, yeah, put some symbols in it and stuff and make it multilingual maybe. But uh, Or just do a straight reprint because, yeah, lo like a lot of these games, it's it's always been out of print and it's baffling to me knowing that... I don't, I don't know how many copies they made though. I don't know the business behind it. There's probably a reason. But it seems baffling when uh, people love Stefan Fell's designs so much and, you know, Castles of Burgundy, always been in print, always sells. It's language independent though, isn't it, really, apart from the rule book. Uh, but then there are classics like Macau that's kind of, they're not forgotten, they are mentioned often enough and, you know, held in high esteem. But, you know, everyone should be able to play this. You know, why is it still, after all of these years, completely out of print? It's a real shame and I really, really hope that changes. This is 10th anniversary, I think. Get Macau back. In the year of the dragon got it, Notre Dame got it. Yeah, just get Macau back in print. That is the one message you should take away from this. The playthrough will tell you whether you'll enjoy it or not. From from this, hope someone from Alia watches and gets it reprinted. Thanks to this video, and then you can all thank me because it was all down to me and nobody else. That's that's the story, and I'm sticking to it anyway. I'm going to go do another video now. There has to be more playthroughs. It has to keep coming. We have to keep doing this. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching. There's more playthroughs. Hundreds of them. There's a Patreon if you'd like to support me and I do more videos. But yeah, thanks for watching this one and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.